It's truly a pleasure to be here. I flew in last night from the San Francisco Bay Area. I also wanted to point out that you all are in a room with a child who has GM1 gangliosidosis. So little Aiden over there has late infantile GM1. For GM1 gangliosidosis, a lysosomal storage disease, it is ultra rare. There are an estimated 1,000 people living with GM1 in the US. Like, all, uh, like the major vast majority of rare and ultra-rare diseases, there is no FDA-approved treatment. There is one uh, small molecule that is on the market off-label that sometimes doctors try to recommend. And families try it because it's the only thing that anyone is offering. And they, have a, they struggle greatly due to the cost and because it's an off-label prescription. So the majority of people don't end up getting it or trying it. We managed to try it, and to be honest, it doesn't work very well, at least not in our case. So what are we left with? We are left with supportive care, occupational therapy, physical therapy, palliative care, and hospice care. The majority of patients with GM1 are children, babies, who face certain death. My daughter, Iris, was diagnosed with juvenile GM1 gangliosidosis at age five and a half. Her diagnosis was in August of 2013. So I have been advocating for a treatment now for over 10 years. In this picture, you can see um, in the upper, let's see, upper corner in the blue dress that um, actually people didn't believe her diagnosis when she was first diagnosed. And the school didn't even want to offer us services. But she has a highly degenerative neurological disease. You can see the past 10 years have taken a great toll. She has lost virtually everything. Her ability to speak, to walk, to move. She suffers from seizures. She has a feeding tube. I want to take you back. I had no prior fundraising experience, but I knew I wanted to help, and we heard of research to support. This slide says 327 people supported it in two months. Please subtract a month, because it took me a month. I created the fundraiser, and I had to get up the courage for a whole month before I could post it. So people, the outpouring of support was incredible and truly extraordinary. The initial goal of our fundraiser was a originally $50,000. And I had to keep increasing the goal. And I felt I was doing it very tentatively. And we started approaching $100,000 in donations. That night, though, I went on uh, the internet and I contacted all the Bay Area news stations about our story to ask them to give us coverage. I was at work the next morning, and they did give us coverage. All the stations called us back. So I'm going to show you a video that takes you back to where we were and how we wanted to support research, because there was no one else doing it. A rare and deadly disease could take the life of a six-year-old girl in Berkeley if a cure is not found soon. Iris Dooley's parents tell Crown Force Philippe de Gaulle that they've taken to the web to raise money to fight this disease and save children like their daughter. Back in 2013, six-year-old Iris Dooley was diagnosed with the rare and deadly degenerative neurological disease called GM1 gangliosidosis. It's found in just one of every 300,000 people. It robs children of the ability to speak, to walk, to even swallow, and to move their limbs. Last December, her parents Christine and Doug started an online fundraising campaign on the website sweetiris.org, soliciting for donations with this YouTube video, spreading word about the disease, and how people can help. Ultimately, it's your worst nightmare. As of now, the family has raised more than $200,000. The goal is half a million, with the funds going to help further research on the disease at Auburn University in Alabama. But they need your help. I don't think I could ever explain to them how much it means to us. And as Iris's condition deteriorates, her parents stress the importance of trying to reach that fundraising goal as soon as possible to give their daughter the best chance to live. In Philippe Jagal, Cron 4 News. So I just want to tell you, in the news piece, he said we had raised $200,000. We had, we were about to hit $100,000. 
That day, uh, someone in our extended network donated another $100,000 anonymously. The news piece aired, and then a Silicon Valley CEO donated another $100,000. So we went to $300,000, which is a matter of days. All of this was happening, and people said we needed a nonprofit. So we formed the Cure GM1 Foundation, the only 501c3 entirely dedicated to GM1 gangliosidosis ever. We have done a great deal, had many lessons, and had to um, mature greatly and learn about the drug development process. We have an awareness day. It's coming up on May 23rd. We have an annual conference. We recently formed a natural history data sharing consortium. We conducted a caregiver preferences study. We made animal models. We also uh, optimized and deployed the assay for newborn screening for GM1 in the largest newborn screening study in the US, Screen Plus. I have a full-time job, and I have a nonprofit, and I have a special needs child, and another child, and a husband, a family, and a life. There's very little support for ultra-rare diseases like GM1. We have also engaged with the FDA. In 2022, we had the externally led patient focused drug development meeting with FDA, which was the, a watershed moment. I don't think people thought there would be that many people at that meeting. There were 217 people, 33 government employees, and um, 20 caregivers who served as panelists. It was a large moment for us, and we continue to fight. Iris just celebrated her 16th birthday. We've done a great, a great deal over the past 10 plus years. I want to show another video which outlines the work that we've done. There has been a relative explosion of GM1 gangliosidosis clinical trials. Our disease is over 150 years old. There were no clinical trials until after our foundation was started. Please play. President and co-founder of the Cure GM1 Foundation. But above all, I am Iris and Carter's mom. We wanted to talk a little bit about the Cure GM1 Foundation, the nonprofit that we put together to help find a treatment for GM1 in honor of Iris and the global community and everyone who's suffering from GM1. Doug, I'm Iris's dad. A little over 10 years ago, Iris was diagnosed with GM1 a few days before she started kindergarten. She was bright, she was incredibly charming, she had friends and playdates just like any of the other kids. We have been fighting for new research, new clinical trials, and a lot has happened. We're so fortunate. There have been four clinical trials since we set up Cure GM1. When Alice was first diagnosed, we were told there are no treatments, there are no trials, and there is no hope. possible through your support, not just financially, although finances are incredibly important since these programs are incredibly expensive, but also through your volunteering, your encouragement, and your belief that someday we can make this terrible, terrible disease a thing of the past. So thank you so much. Please join us in celebrating Iris's life. There has to be meaning to this suffering. 
and we are so grateful for any support you can offer. Thank you so much. I want to bring you to now a very sobering slide. While we had an amazing burst of clinical trials beginning in 2019, last month, the last company that had a clinical trial discontinued the program. So we, as a community, are left knowing that there are possible treatments that actually, in the family's view, were indeed beneficial to our community, but they are inaccessible. In conclusion, I would like to outline a few ideas regarding how it might be possible to help beyond what our family can do. We need specific incentives for ultra-orphan diseases such as DM1. We, of course, need increased financial support for, and specific grants for patient advocacy groups, drug development, and more research. For a disease such as GM1, I do believe that we need accelerated approval based on biomarkers. We have excellent biomarkers. We also, our disease is primarily infantile. We need modern, modernization and support for newborn screenings so that actually we can get the youngest babies possible into the clinical trials. We also need data sharing incentives and enforcement of data sharing policies. I'm from California, and there is a great government initiative called the California Institute for Regenerative Medicine. They are overrun with proposals. We need more institutes like that to help support the development of treatments and genetic medicines. Thank you very much. <laughs>